if, if you look at the analytics behind uh, proof as well, you can see how it's gone from last week when it went on secondaries. I, I, I could have picked up uh, one for like 7.5 ETH, right? And I thought it was going to go down, but um, nope, look what happened. Today, we are going to dive in the marketing genius behind Moonbirds NFT. So Moonbirds, look, they are right now, they've done over 100K in ETH traded. So that's over about $300 million in volume. And uh, initial launch, I think they did like 75 or $80 million or so. So approaching $400 million in, in total volume. Um, so the team has done really good. And I, I think it's um, I think it's a testament to having a team that is tried and true. And um, I've talked about this quite a bit on, the, on this channel. You know, when I look at investing into projects, I'm looking at uh, the team. Have they been there, done that? Can they execute on the roadmap, right? So I'm gonna give a little context here, but first and foremost, my name is Eric Sue and founder of the Leveling Up Heroes NFT here to help level up the world. It's a personal growth NFT and uh, let us get going. So I'm gonna pop over over here. And so just for those that don't know, Moonbirds, they are 10,000. 10,000 of these owls basically and uh, they look pretty cute this one's like a gangster owl over here and um, some of these look I mean dude this one looks really cool like these hats right um, so you look at this the floor price right now is 36 ETH so if you multiply that by about 3,000 or so that's kind of what it's around $108,000 in US dollars terms um, and you have 6.5k owners right here there's 10k items right and they're created by Proof Collective now Proof Collective, it's kind of a private membership club, and I really regret selling mine. Um, so I, I bought in at two ETH for mine, right? And look at this now, it's at 140 ETH. Um, but you know, it's, it's 1,000 people over here that um, they would have had access to mint two of these birds. Um, and these birds have just shot up. I mean, when they first went on secondary last week, it was about seven ETH or so, now it's up to 36. And then this membership card, um, 140 ETH, right? So if you look at this, um, times 3,000. I mean, it's, it's $420,000 to get one of these memberships right now. Um, and so that's what it is. Now, I also want to pull up kind of if, if you look at the analytics behind uh, proof as well, you can see how it's gone from last week when it went on secondaries, I, I, I could have picked up uh, one for like 7.5 ETH, right? And I thought it was going to go down. But um, nope, look what happened. Shot straight up. And this is where it's at as of um, it's about 36 right now. So Proof is interesting also because um, Proven Team, right? And they've got something called nesting, uh, which is basically, in my opinion, it looks like it's it's staking, like trying to earn rewards from um, your NFT. Um, and you can see in the last seven days, you know, 8,000 in, in sales, 358 in the last 24 hours. Um, Proof has really also created a rally in the NFT market because of all the hype. Um, there's also a lot of scams going around too, right? So um, I just want to set the tone real quick before we go into how they really did uh, marketing. So if we take a look at their Twitter, okay, this is before the launch. I, I'm using a filter here. Um, they launched on April 16th, 2022. And you can see um, what's going on over here with um, with Proof. And so like, you know, for them, they just showed a lot of their art, right? And the, they got a lot of engagement. Um, keep in mind too, Kevin Rose, he co-founded Dig. Ryan Carson, his CEO, I actually used to work for him. You know, they've got they've got an experienced team, right? And so what they they did basically is just share a lot of um, share a lot of art um, entries for allow list raffle. So they had, they had a raffle, right? And um, to, for people to get onto the allow list, it did, it didn't seem like they were running a bunch of um, different contests out there. Um, so you can see right here. So. Um, the Moonbirds Mint doesn't have an allow list. If you'd like to cover us, we're so grateful for the consideration and word of mouth, but we won't be trading slots that we don't have for favorable coverage. It's simple. Share the project if you believe in it. And that, that's kind of cool, right? Because a lot of the projects out there is the marketing right now is really based on allow lists and, and collaborations, but because they're proven already and they have an audience already and the people that are members of Proof, the thousand people that are in there, they're already very influential, right? And they're gonna talk about it in circles and then they just kind of went up into the right, right? But the key thing here is like, if you have an audience already, you don't really need to promote as much and you don't need to use some of the tactics that everyone else uses, right? Um, and so there's that, but you can see all this other stuff over here. Usually like what happens before the mint is like, people are retweeting contests and things like that, but they're not really doing that here, right? And they're, they're really talking about uh, different scams that are happening. Um, and you can see over here, um, what they've been doing, what I'll say worked really well was they did a ton of podcasts, right? So we can't control what the hype looks like, but we can acknowledge it. We can let you we let you all know. We take your belief, trust, and passion of the space very seriously. It means the world to us, right? And so they just continue on here. 
but you don't again you're not seeing them retweet different spam and they're just here trying to do a good job of serving their community right and so i just wanted to flag that first now what they did do really well is podcast tours right so you can say they work with youtube influencers podcasters um you know we, we might even do a podcast with them as well on one of our podcasts and you can see they did one with Bankless, and looks like they did another one with Bankless. And then um, you can see Kevin and Ryan are over here. And then also Tim Ferriss too, right? Obviously Tim Ferriss has a really big podcast. Um, they, they did the random show, right? But you can see this is no accident. They, this was released seven days ago. You know, there's this NFT Now uh, podcast too, which was done nine days ago. So you can see it's no coincidence that um, really the only push that they were looking for, what works out well when you're launching a book is you're doing interviews, right? You're doing interviews and they might appear on YouTube. You might go on Joe Rogan, which goes onto the podcast too and people people tend to buy that way right um and so they they weren't ashamed to do that and i, I think the tours are, are very effective um, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, to have one of these podcasts right um so there's that and they already had a built-in audience okay they already created a pressure cooker of people that were very interested already again they didn't have to use all the other kind of hype tactics and strategies that other people are using and, and there's nothing wrong with using those right i'm just saying like once you've established yourself and once you've proven yourself and once you've already, you're already had one successful project, and also once you've gained a, a certain level of fame as well, you can get a Tim Ferriss, right? Because Kevin Rose is good friends with Tim Ferriss. You can get on Bankless. You can get a, get on NFT now, right? So I, I just wanted to flag that because um, you might use, like, for example, if you're starting a project right now, you might do a combination. You might do a combination of podcast tours, of YouTube, and maybe it, not, it might not be as big as these, but um, you're leveraging those. And you might still have to do, you know, a lot of Twitter spaces. And you might be leveraging your email list. You might be uh, leveraging, you know, allow list. You might be leveraging uh, contests as well, right? But I think w the, the biggest takeaway for me here is that they did their marketing in a very tasteful way and they just focused on execution and they focused on creating a great product. And it wasn't like, oh, they just built it and everyone came, right? It's like they built it, they built products before, they built audiences around them. And because they had such great products, audiences were created there. And then when they built something new, then the pressure cooker was already created and when they launched it it was just a matter of doing that um kind of podcast tour or, or youtube tour and then um off into the races right and so that's why i think they've done so well and, and here's the thing like you also know that these people they take their reputation very seriously and they're not going to rug you right rugging you meaning that they're just going to take the money and run because that money is a lot of money right i mean they've in effect you know if they've really taken 75 80 million dollars maybe a little if you take on um royalties in, in, into account maybe it's closer to 100 million dollars or so now that here here's the thing that hundred million dollars, that that's like raising like a series, like a fat series B or series C for in, in startup land, right? That's a lot of money. And so the question now is, is what are they going to do with it? And um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with the next. Hopefully they're going to just, I, I believe that they're going to continue to build. Um, and that's why I really regret um, A, not buying a Moonbirds and B, selling my proof. So let me know what you think I missed in the comments. Do you think they did anything else from a marketing uh, perspective? Because I, I think they've just been very head down on, on what they've been doing. Um, in terms of building. So uh, hats off to them. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed videos like this. And we'll catch you later. A lot of people go into it thinking that, you know, if I just put out content, if I just stay consistent, then I'll just eventually blow up. But no matter how many times you put out the same bad video, it's still the same bad video. So I believe it's a combination of consistency, but also continuously innovating and trying out new, new video formats, trying out new video styles and seeing what catches on.